Hey guys, what's up? Today I have Saint the Poodle and I'm gonna show you guys how I groom him. Now this video is 16 minutes long, but it takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to complete the whole process. First, I start by grinding down his nails and this is him kissing me. Next, I take a cotton ball and I take my ear cleaner and I start cleaning his ears. Now Saint is a very sweet boy for everything else, but he does not like his ears cleaned. I do it anyway, we get through it every time and he doesn't stay mad, so that's a good thing. Mr. Saint is now in the bath and I have diluted Omela shampoo by Double K in this gallon of water and I'm going to scrub him all over with it. Now, the bath should be the most relaxing part of this entire grooming process. This is where I take my time, I massage them, I relax them with a blueberry facial because next is going to be drying time, brushing, and the full haircut. So I want them to be as calm, as relaxed as possible so this grooming process can be a breeze. Saint did have some eye buggies, so I got my flea comb and I gently took them out. Now I do suggest soaking the eye buggers in some facial shampoo and water just so it could be easier to pull them out. I carry about three chamois with me in the van and I do dry my dogs with chamois because chamois take out so much water from their fur before I dry them. Look how much water I got. And I repeat that process about two to three times. Now I am putting in my leave-in conditioner. I will link that below. And I always do this to dogs before I dry them because it'll just be easier to brush them out. And this leave-in conditioner has something in it that just makes drying time be cut in half, so I love it. I do use a flat nozzle on him because this guy's pretty little, so I don't want the force of the force dryer to be too much on him. Now, if it would be a standard poodle, I would probably use my more narrow head. Now, this is a technique that groomers call fluff drying, and it is pretty much when you are drying a dog while brushing the dog out. This technique ensures that a poodle with curly coat be dried correctly and straight. Now, I'm going to do his sanitary trim and also his paw pads. I do this to each and every dog before I start their actual haircut. Now, I am taking my 40 blade on my wall Bavera and I am doing Saint's paw pads. Now, when I do paw pads, I don't dig in too deep in between the paw pads and I'm very careful around them because they are very sensitive. All right, now I'm finishing up his sanitary area and I switch over my blade to a 15 blade. I feel like this blade gives me a clean cut and it's not too short to give him any scrapes or burns. Now I take my number one comb and I place that on top of a number 40 blade and I'm going to do his entire body with this comb attachment. Now it's going to take about half off as you could see in the video. I'm doing this process as neat as I possibly can, but to be honest, I'm really not worried too much about the lines that it's leaving because I'm gonna go over his entire body and once I comb his coat out, all those lines will magically disappear. What I'm mainly concentrating on is grabbing the hair evenly so it could come off evenly. Now, this is why the prep work is so important because if he would still have knots or tangles, this comb attachment would not go through. And if it did go through, it would leave holes on where the mats or tangles were. Now I'm also concentrated on taking off as much hair as I can with the comb before I have to scissor. Why? Because scissoring takes a lot longer than using a comb attachment. I am mobile and I work with one dog at a time and I'm on a time crunch because my schedule is pretty tight. So I need to make sure that I am working efficiently and I also need to make sure that my grooms are bomb.com. For his legs, I'm using the same comb that I used on his body to skim them. Now, when I say skim, what I mean is that I am not using the same pressure that I used on his body. I'm using less of a pressure when I'm using the clippers because I don't want them to be as short as the length on his body because if they were that short, they would look like little sticks. It's pretty hard to skim the inside of the leg that you're working on, so I just skim the leg of the opposite side, if that makes sense. 
skimming is pretty cool because not only does it take time off of the scissoring process, you could also shape the legs however you want to. Now with Saint, I like his legs to flare a little bit at the bottom just to give him a little bit of personality. So I skim the top and then just kind of go outwards at the bottom. All right, now I'm going to shave his armpits with a 15 blade. I took my comb attachment off and yes, we do shave dog's armpits because those little hairs grow out, they mat up and they stick out like a sore thumb. I also take that 15 blade and create his tuck up. I make sure that the line is nice, crisp and neat because this will give his body a lot more definition. Now I'm going to use one of my holy grails by Chris Christensen, Thick and Thicker. This is pretty much a doggy hairspray. I'm going to take my regular comb and I'm going to start combing the hair up and out. The first thing I do is round out the paws because the paws are going to tell me how big that leg is going to be. I am using my little Solita Asian Fusion shears. I'll link those below. And when I'm rounding out paws, I'm making sure that those nails are not going to be visible when his feet are on the ground. Now Mr. Saint is ready for the shaping and scissoring process and notice how his hair is brushed up and out. What I am doing now is blending his leg to go with his body. Now his legs are longer than his body, but you still need to blend that area closest to his body so the transition is flawless. Shaping and styling becomes so much easier when you understand the shape every part of the body of the dog needs to have to flatter that dog and its body type. You have to visualize what shape is going to be there before you actually create the masterpiece. You can't really see it fully, it's off camera, but this is Saint giving me kisses as I groom him. I really love this little man. I try to make this process as relaxing as possible for all of them. Guys, I also brush up even in the front legs. Now, your comb is going to be your best friend and truth teller. It is going to tell you what hairs need to be scissored, what hairs are out of place. I will even take my comb to make sure that a dog that is fully groomed and finished is completely even. Once I pass the comb through, I could know if it is completely even or not. Now, a lot of groomers, especially newbies, have a hard time on knowing when to stop scissoring or perfecting a dog. You stop when you could comb out that dog and no hair is out of place. Shaping the belly and making sure that that part is really neat is going to make your grooms look really crisp and clean, which is what you want. So don't skip that part.
Now to finish off his body, I'm gonna take my chunkers and I'm going to thinning shear his entire body. This is going to allow me to erase any lines and also gonna give me a second chance to get any little hairs that are out of place. Saint gets a little bunny tail. The first thing that I do is I fluff it up with my half moon comb and then I take some length off before I start rounding the tail and I'm using my Solita Asian Fusion Shears. The easiest way to go about this is to hold the tail by the base and then visualize a circle and make sure that you're using curved shears because that curve is going to help you create that shape. It's going to be very hard if you use straight shears for this process. Look how cute Saint's tail is when he wags it. He's adorable, he really is. All right guys, home stretch, we are onto the face. Now disclaimer, Saint is not good for his face. I don't know why, he's never really liked it. So I mean, we just work it out and there's moments where he's still for me, but then there's moments that he just gets impatient and we need to take breaks. So ideally, I would have liked to be using shorter shears on his face, cause that way I could just be a little bit more detailed but because he doesn't like his face, I spare him and I just use my long curves so the process could go faster. Saint doesn't get the traditional shaved poodle face, instead he gets an Asian fusion look. Grooming faces is super fun. Now, I know it could be probably intimidating for new groomers. I know that I was overwhelmed when I first started grooming and when I got to the face, it was like, it was too much. So this is what helped me. I try to break down the face as much as I can. So you could start by breaking the face down in half and then concentrating on the right side and then you just match the left side to it. That way you're not seeing it as a whole. These little hairs by his bottom jaw need to be trimmed every time I groom him because if he starts panting or if he opens his mouth, if I don't trim them, they will be sticking up and out. Next, I'm going to take my little guy thinning shears and I'm going to just start erasing all the lines and blending everything together. So I usually hold dogs by their chin hair, but Saint does not like to be held there, so I have to hold him by his neck. Now this is a technique that I do uh, for dogs that don't like their chin hair held. I do wrap my hand around their neck, but it's very lightly. He has full motion, but because I have very sharp objects by his face, I need to let him know where he can and cannot move to. After I am done with the muzzle, then I move on to the top knot. Now, because he has an Asian fusion face, I'm going to make sure that his top knot is cute and round and not too short on the sides. If he would have a shaved face, like a traditional poodle, then the top knot will be closer to the sides of his face, but not in this case because it has to all flow together with his muzzle and the look of his face. When creating a top knot, the trick is to look at it from every angle. So you wanna look at it from the sides, from the top, and you even wanna turn their head and look at it from the back just to make sure that it is round all over. All right guys, last but not least, we're going to work on his ears. Now I just pretty much create the shape that is already there. I just trim them up, I make them a little shorter, and then I'm gonna go in with my thinning shears to erase all lines and just blend them up a bit to make them look a little bit more natural. Look how adorable this guy is. I love him so much. All right guys, I'm gonna spray him with Plum Silky by Nature Specialty. I'm gonna show you guys the cover. You guys could buy this on Amazon. 
I'm also going to put on some Silky Silk Serum on his hair for the final touch. Here is the final look, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything new or if you just simply like the process, please hit the like button. Please hit subscribe. I really love what I do. I wouldn't trade this career for the world and I love sharing it with you guys. Now, this takes a lot of patience, a lot of training, a lot of practice and a bunch of love, but it's worth every minute of it. Saint deserves all the treats because he was an amazing boy. Saint is happy, looking good and ready to show off. Before I take him home, I always try to play with him a little bit outside because he really, really is a love bug and enjoys every minute of it. Thank you guys so much for the love, for the support. Bye guys, I will see you in the next video. Up and out, love and light. Laura Ventura.